Before the rise of President Traoré, Burkina Faso had suspended diplomatic relations with North Korea in 2017 to comply with the UN Security Council sanctions over Pyongyang's nuclear weapons program. Similar to the actions taken by many other countries at the time, effectively isolating North Korea. However, in a move to distance itself further from the West after expelling France, the Traoré administration announced plans to resume diplomatic ties with North Korea. This decision was announced by the then Foreign Affairs Minister, Olivia Ruamba, who stated that the renewed cooperation between the two countries would allow for exemplary bilateral collaboration in various areas. According to the minister, the governments of Burkina Faso and North Korea intend to focus their partnership on military equipment, mining, healthcare, agriculture, and research. To cement this renewed relationship, a new North Korean ambassador, Cha Hui Cho, was appointed to Burkina Faso. Trahori's decision to align Burkina Faso with North Korea, which is widely considered a threat by the West, has undoubtedly shocked the international community and reflects his resolute stance against Western allies. This move is reminiscent of the decisions made by Russian President Putin to strengthen ties with North Korea, which has also surprised and unsettled the West. While Traoré's decision to renew ties with North Korea has been seen as a surprising move against Western influence, Putin's actions in strengthening Russia's alliance with North Korea are considered even more serious. This is because Russia itself is viewed as an adversary of the West, and the notion of these two countries, both perceived as threats by the international community, forging a closer partnership is not just shocking, but also concerning. Recently, President Putin paid a visit to North Korea to meet with its leader, Kim Jong-un. Although this was Putin's first trip to North Korea in 24 years, the two countries have been steadily enhancing their relationship since the start of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. There have been reports that North Korea has been providing Russia with weapons in exchange for technological expertise, though both nations have consistently denied such arms transfers. Upon his arrival in the North Korean capital, Putin was greeted with a warm welcome, with President Kim personally on hand to receive him. After the official ceremony, which included rows of soldiers standing at attention and crowds of children lining the square decorated with banners and balloons, the two leaders met to discuss ways to deepen their bilateral relations. During the talks, Putin thanked Kim for North Korea's support in the ongoing conflict in Ukraine emphasizing their shared opposition to the imperialist, hegemonic policies of the U.S. and its allies against Russia. During the meeting, Putin also praised the historical ties between the two countries, tracing their origins to the Soviet Army's fight against the Japanese military on the Korean Peninsula at the end of World War II, as well as Moscow's support for Pyongyang during the Korean War. At the conclusion of the talks, the two presidents signed an agreement that pledges mutual aid if either country faces aggression. This strategic pact comes as both nations are confronting escalating standoffs with the West. Published by North Korea's state media after Putin's departure for Vietnam, where he intends to further deepen ties with its leadership, the agreement is titled the Treaty on Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. Effectively, it revives a defunct mutual defense agreement between the two countries from the 1960s. Specifically, Article 4 of the agreement states that in case any one of the two sides is put in a state of war by an armed invasion from an individual state or several states, the other side shall provide military and other assistance with all means in its possession without delay by Article 51 of the UN Charter and the laws of the DPRK and the Russian Federation. Given that both Russia and North Korea are currently facing sanctions and threats of military intervention from the West, the inclusion of this provision in the agreement is not surprising. While the full impact of this deal on the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war remains uncertain, experts suggest that it marks the strongest connection between Moscow and Pyongyang since the end of the Cold War. A full day after the Putin-Kim summit, South Korean officials said they were still interpreting the results, including the potential implications of Russia's obligations if North Korea comes under attack. Analysts were mixed on whether the agreement obligates Russia to an automatic military intervention on behalf of the North in war situations, or if the language was carefully worded to avoid such a direct commitment. 
It also wasn't immediately clear why the agreement invoked Article 51 of the UN Charter. While Putin described the pact as a breakthrough document, reflecting shared desires to elevate their relations, President Kim stated that the two countries had a fiery friendship, and that the deal represented their strongest treaty ever, effectively placing their relationship on the level of an alliance. Kim vowed full support for Russia's war in Ukraine. Aside from the mutual defense provisions, the pact also includes commitments to deepen political, trade, investment, and security cooperation between the two countries. For Putin, the deal ensures a constant supply of arms and ammunition needed for the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, while Kim gains access to Russian energy and food supplies. Unsurprisingly, Putin's visit to North Korea has drawn significant backlash. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stated that the trip signaled Russia's desperation to prop up its war effort in Ukraine through this deepening alliance with Pyongyang. We are very much concerned about this because this is what's keeping the war going, said Secretary of State Blinken, referring to the deepening cooperation between Russia and North Korea. He added that the fastest way to end the war in Ukraine is to disabuse Putin of the notion that he can outlast Ukraine and its supporters. Blinken emphasized that if Putin loses access to the fuel and other resources he needs for his war machine, it would significantly undermine his ability to continue the conflict. The Pentagon's press secretary, Major General Pat Ryder, also expressed concern about the growing cooperation between Russia and North Korea, noting that it could destabilize the Korean Peninsula. Ryder pointed out that Pyongyang and Seoul have both recently abandoned a 2018 military agreement that had helped to defuse tensions at the border. South Korea, a key U.S. ally, has condemned the Russia-North Korea deal and indicated that it may reconsider its policy of providing only non-lethal military support to Ukraine. Seoul warned that the agreement poses a threat to its security and could negatively impact its relations with Moscow. Japan has also voiced strong condemnation of the deal between Russia and North Korea. Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Yoshimasa Hayashi, stated that Tokyo is seriously concerned that Putin did not rule out military technology cooperation with Pyongyang, given the implications for regional security. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg further elaborated on the broader geopolitical implications, saying that authoritarian powers like North Korea and China are increasingly aligning with each other and with Russia. Stoltenberg emphasized the importance of democratic nations standing together in the face of these growing authoritarian alliances. However, some have questioned whether the West is being hypocritical in its criticism of Russia and North Korea's partnership. They argue that it is not solely the West's prerogative to have allies and that countries should have the sovereign right to choose their own international partnerships, even if they do not align with Western interests. It seems that in the eyes of the West, they are the only acceptable partners for any country. When nations choose to forge relationships with countries that are not aligned with Western interests, they are often labeled and criticized in the media as if they have committed a grave offense. However, the fundamental truth is that every country has the sovereign right to choose its own international partnerships based on its own interests and calculations. It is hypocritical for the West to dictate who other nations should or should not be allies with. This sense of Western superiority and the belief that they have the exclusive right to determine global alliances is what prompted Niger to kick out U.S. military forces from the country. When U.S. officials visited Niger, instead of focusing on areas of mutual cooperation, they lectured the Nigerian government about why they should not partner with Russia. The United States itself would never tolerate other countries telling it who it can and cannot have as allies. So it is deeply self-righteous and hypocritical for Washington to impose such restrictions on other sovereign nations. Russia has clearly rejected the concerns expressed by the West regarding its deepening ties with North Korea. Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin spokesman, has stated plainly that North Korea is Russia's neighbor and a friendly country with which Moscow is developing robust bilateral relations. Peskov emphasized that Russia's right to cultivate good relations with its neighbors should not be a matter of concern or challenge for anyone. The reality is that if Ukraine can receive weapons and support from the United States, 
then there is no principled reason why Russia cannot have a similar arrangement with North Korea. Each country must have the freedom to forge the international partnerships it deems necessary for its own national interests.